Hello, and thank you for spending a few minutes of your precious time with us. We're here at the Plaza Branch of the Kansas City Public Library. I'm Tammy Booth, also known as Blue Girl with Show Me Progress, and today we're talking with Sarah Galuli, who on Tuesday filed to run for the General Assembly in the newly redrawn 24th Legislative District. For fellow redistricting nerds, the new district will be made up of most of the current 37th, which is being vacated by the departing Mike Talboy, and part of the 39th, currently represented by Judy Morgan. And in the interest of full disclosure, I should tell the viewers that I live in what is currently the 37th legislative district in the part that will become the 24th, and I should tell you, and apologize in advance, that if you are elected, you will be my representative. Sarah, thank you for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and why you want to represent us in Jefferson City in the General Assembly. Yeah, thank you so much for having me today. Um, you know, I think one of the primary reasons I'm running for the House of Representatives in Missouri is I've really been on both sides of the policymaking process. I've been a community organizer, specifically in the LGBT community, and now I work in government affairs for a nonprofit women's health care provider. So I've really seen on both sides of that process what it's like to have a vibrant community working for change and the sort of um, deal making that goes on behind the scenes. And what I really would like to do is go to Jefferson City and be a policymaker that has an engaged and vibrant constituency, but also is a fair and honest policymaker who's not just playing uh, politics as usual. You're an out lesbian and you've worked with PROMO and as a lobbyist for Planned Parenthood. While neither of those things will hurt you in this district and in fact might put you over the top with some voters, do you think that your history of pro-choice and gay rights activism might alienate some of the more right-wing Christian members of the General Assembly that you will have to work with should you be elected? That's a great question. Well, certainly I would say um, I support a woman's right to choose what's best for herself when she's um, facing a pregnancy, whether that is a decision to become a parent or help a family uh, grow through adoption or to terminate that pregnancy. But I don't think that the labels of pro-choice and pro-life really fit and work in America today. I think people's positions are far more nuanced um, and more complicated, and we all know that when facing a pregnancy, no woman makes a decision lightly. So I think I absolutely have the ability to understand that folks feel very differently about the issues um, of abortion and birth control. But what I think we've done historically in Jefferson City is just sort of shouted across a great divide at each other and not really had a substantive conversation about the impacts of the laws that we pass on everyday families. Um, so I certainly hope that voters across the district, um, regardless of their personal, religious, or moral positions, would feel I'm an elected official that they can speak to honestly about their concerns, and then we can look to common sense policies. I think all voters can agree that the best way to reduce the number of abortions in Missouri is to increase access to affordable contraception and um, medically accurate age-appropriate sex education. As terms of um, being an out lesbian in the Kansas City community, certainly not something that I hide from. And as our state senator Jolie Justice has said, if you're not ha if you're not at the table, you might be on the menu. So I think it's important that we have a, a diversity of voices. Um, when the Don't Say Gay bill came up this year, one of the most powerful voices in Jefferson City was the LGBT members who came forward and talked about how this bill would impact them and their children and the children in their district as well. So I think, again, those are conversations that we can have. Um, I think we've lost our ability for civil discourse a little bit, but certainly Kansas City has retained their ability to, to sort of speak across our differences, um, and I'm willing to be that candidate. Great. The Kansas City School District is back in the news again and not in a good way. What would you as our representative do in Jeff City to help the kids who are not being served by the district? Well, I think one of the things we've failed to do in the conversation over education is really center children um, and center the students and the scholars in our district when we're having conversations about how we can move forward to a more productive, successful district. Two years in the life of a student is the difference between literacy and illiteracy. We have students in the district right now who will be graduating for two years whose diplomas are unaccredited um, and their history or their future in uh, college or other academic pursuits is unknown. So I think we've got to focus students. Um, the two things that our legislature can do but continues to fail to do is fully fund our schools and trust our professionals. 
Um, I think we can all agree that we need a better program to evaluate teachers, but simple test scores are not the answer. Uh, my partner is a public school teacher, and we've had a lot of conversations about the breadth of testing that can really help us determine which teachers are struggling and need more support, um, which teachers are doing excellent, and which teachers maybe need to be counseled out of the profession. That's not one number. That's a comprehensive process. We need to bring teachers and administrators to the table and look at all the factors that we can use to help uh, struggling teachers improve um, and also help administrators identify successful teachers. You've made, you've made education and the need for training beyond high school a central theme in your campaign. Here in Kansas City, we're fortunate to have the Metropolitan Community Colleges system, which trains a lot of the health care workers who serve our community. Mm -hmm. If elected to the General Assembly, how would you protect the MCC system from those who would defund education at all levels? Absolutely. Uh, working for a nonprofit health care provider, we know that the, um, uh, the Affordable Care Act, this, the future of the Affordable Care Act is uncertain, but what we do know is some of the changes are here to stay. So I think talking about health care is a great example. Uh, we know that there's a rising need for medical assistance um, and technically trained medical professionals in the health care system, and a lot of those professionals get their education through MCC and other community college systems. I think we've got to look at fully funding those programs. I think we have to be aggressive about looking for additional revenue, and I think we do that through common sense revenue increases. Having a 17 cent cigarette tax went across the state line in Illinois, I think it's a dollar and 19 cents, that's a no-brainer. We need to raise that tax, we need to be able to fund uh, community colleges and other education programs so we can graduate healthcare professionals. Kansas City, especially the district you want to represent, has a unique geography with the state line running right through the heart of the city. We have people on one side of State Line Road living in Missouri and on the other side of the street living in Kansas. Mm -hmm. Those of us who live in this bi-state zone seem to be more prone to compromise and comedy than typical Missourians or Kansans either one. Do you think you could turn that to your advantage in Jefferson City and advance bi-state projects and economic development that would benefit not just the Missouri side of the state line, but the entire metro area? Absolutely. Uh, working on both sides of the state line, I have relationships with uh, policymakers and nonprofit officials and other government officials in Kansas, as well as in Missouri. Um, you know, Representative Talboy in particular has done a great job of building relationships with those officials and um, nonprofit executives in uh, Johnson County and Wyandotte, but the rest of our delegation hasn't necessarily done the hard work of building those relationships. So I think we need a two pronged approach. Um, in the Kansas City metro community. First, we need to make sure that the tools for economic development are available in Missouri so we can bring outside businesses from Massachusetts and North Carolina to the metro. But then we also have to have conversations with our colleagues in Kansas about having a, a bilateral sort of disarmament when it comes to the sort of great job uh, race on the state line. It does us no goods when we're moving buildings. We're changing the direction um, that commuters drive every morning, but we're not bringing good, high-paying jobs to the metro community. So absolutely, we have to have a bi-state approach, um, and we have to do that through bringing the tools in Jefferson City and then building relationships in Johnson and Wyandotte County. So we've already mentioned you're an out lesbian and you have laudably dedicated much of your professional life to equal rights for gays and lesbians in our society and to women's rights as well. How would you advance civil rights and social justice in Missouri if you're elected? Um, well, I think we have to have some honest conversation with our colleagues in Jefferson City. Um, I think it's important that folks across the state, our lawmakers and our citizens, know their LGBT neighbors. Um, and that's one thing I'm definitely committed to doing and I've spent much of my career doing is helping folks understand the challenges of the lives of LGBT Americans. Um, I think a great example is my partner and I are looking to start a family in the near future um, and I'm hoping to carry a pregnancy and if I do so my partner is going to have to adopt um, our child legally and that's a process that will be um, expensive obviously but it will also be um, fraught with sort of unknowns um, for example if we cross the state line into Arkansas she may not be rec legally recognized as a parent and I think that all Missourians can agree that um, a couple who comes together to raise a child in a loving home should have the right to visit their child in the hospital the right to protect their child. Um, so I think we have to continue to have those conversations, change hearts and minds, and help folks understand what it means to be an out um, LGBT Missourian. 
The issue of health care and health care access is a big one for Missourians, and it's more of an issue outstate than it is here in Jackson County, where we have a public health system that's widely acclaimed as one of the best in the nation. Operating in conjunction with the UMKC School of Medicine, uh, Truman Medical Center delivers, delivers health care to, to the community. Um, the next representative for this area will be tasked with protecting our public health system while being sympathetic to the needs of the folks out state who not only don't have the access but lack representation that wants them to have it. Mm -hmm. They'd prefer to level the playing field by taking ours away rather than giving to their own constituents. TMK, TMC and UMKC need a fierce protector when in Jeff City next session. Is that you? Absolutely. Every day um, we see low income women and families in our health center and we see what it means when you have to choose between paying your rent and getting the health care that you need. And we have got to fight to protect that in Jefferson City. And absolutely, that's a priority for me. Um, I also think that there are some real concrete, common sense things that we can do in Jefferson City to expand public health and access to health care in the metro, but across the state. Um, for example, the Barrier Free Care Act is a piece of legislation that would expand the practice of nurse practitioners who can provide affordable, accessible care in rural and urban communities across the state. That's a no-brainer. So we, um, at, you know, at my employer, we have a lot of nurse practitioners. They provide top-notch care every day. Um, they do it with the touch of a nurse. They do it with affordability. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that nurse practitioners are consulting with physicians to provide their patients the best care. But we also know that when it comes to routine, basic care, there's no reason that nurse practitioners can't provide that, and we ought to give them the ability to do so. I think the midwifery issue um, is one that's near and dear to my heart. I served, worked as a doula for many years, which is a labor assistant, a trained labor assistant. And we know that midwives provide high quality care, both nurse midwives in hospitals and lay midwives outside of hospitals. I um, mean, we live in a state where there's, there's, no, um, there's no laws around midwives. And the midwives really feel it's important to be able to practice with confidence. They want to practice in a way that is meeting the needs of their patients, um, but also accountable to insurance companies um, and others who are looking out for the welfare of pregnant women as midwives do every day. I think, again, we passed the Midwifery Licensing Act and we provide um, pregnancy and maternity care for women across the state who might not otherwise have it. Healthcare access is personal to you. Would you like to share a little bit of that with the viewers? Yeah, healthcare access is, I think, personal to every family. Um, I think every family um, has had struggles. Uh, in my family in particular, my father has advanced Parkinson's. Um, I was the, I'm the youngest of five children, so he's a little bit older when I came along and was a career military man. He was diagnosed with Parkinson's when I was 13. He was around uh, 50 at the time. And we're now about 20 years into his illness, and um, my family's really dealing with um, the complications of both having a family member with advanced needs, but also the complications of being the caregivers. Um, and then my sister, uh, she was um, diagnosed with an idiopathic kidney disease, which means it's sort of for unknown reasons, and she had to have a kidney transplant. Um, the good news is uh, she did get a, donation, a kidney donation from a family member, and she is doing well. But what we learned, I think, from my sister's experience, and we continue to learn every day from my father, is that high quality care that's covered by insurance, um, it improves the quality of life for folks long term, but it also keeps people like my sister in their jobs. Sarah, I would like to thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with me today, and I would like to wish you luck not just in your race, but in all your future endeavors. I'm glad to have you out there fighting for us in whatever capacity. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for taking the time to spend a few minutes with us as we get to know the candidates who are vying to represent you in Jeff City. These races are really important. Remember, there is an inverse but proportional relationship with where a name occurs on the ballot and how directly the effects of that office are on your life. The farther down the ballot a name is found, the greater the impact the person elected to that office has on your life every day. Getting to know the candidates is more than just a good idea. It's your civic duty.